I want to look at another rose petal graph to draw your attention to some other interesting aspect about them. And so as we do this, um, I want you to compare it to the one we did before to notice the similarities and the differences. So as, as usual, here's our sine, uh, our sine function in polar form. And viewing this in rectangular form, we know that the amplitude is 8 and that the period would be 2 pi over 2. Uh, which is equal to pi. But for our purposes, we're going to treat that as 180 degrees. So below here, you'll see a graph, or you'll see a grid to graph in rectangular form. So I'd like you to do that and um, compare it to mine. So when you do that, you should get something like this if you put 2 pi at the end or 360 degrees at the end. Right, and these are all the key points. So it looks like I have two full periods, right? Two full periods. So let's do the same thing we did before. This again is the rectangular form. The y-axis is our r. That's theta. Again, this is a rectangular form. And we're interested in graphing polar. The polar form. And we'll make note of some observations when we're done. There. All right, so let's again imagine here we are, r is 0 and theta is 0. And that means we're facing this way and we don't walk out. So there's that point. And then, as we rotate 45 to 45 degrees, we're walking out a farther distance because R is increasing. And then as we walk, or as we rotate uh, towards 90 degrees, we're walking out a shorter distance. And so we see that the farthest we walk out happens when we rotate 45 degrees, which is here, and we walk out a total of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In between 0 and 45 degrees, we're gradually walking out farther as we rotate. And then from 45 to 90, we're walking a shorter distance out. Next, we are rotating between 90 degrees and 135 degrees. And as you do that, we're rotating, so 90 and 135 is this section here. In fact, let me let me put these out in here again so I make it clear. That's 45 degrees, 0. We know that's 90. We know that's 135 degrees. We notice this is 180, 225, and 270. And back here to 360. As we rotate from 90 to 135, we're walking backwards because R is negative, which means all our points are going to be in this, this section here. And when we, we rotate at 135 degrees, we're facing this direction, but we're going to take eight steps backwards. All right, and so uh, from 90 to 135, we're gradually walking out farther until 135, and then from 135 to 80, and as we're facing from 135 to 80, we're, we're taking steps backwards, but gradually those steps are getting shorter and shorter. And we'll keep going between 180 and 270. These are all steps forward. 180 to 270 means we're rotating, uh, starting by facing in the 180 direction and then gradually rotating to here and we take our biggest step out at 225 degrees where we walk out 8 and in between there in between 180 and 225 and 225 and 270 we're taking smaller steps out and so lastly 
we're again taking steps backwards because our r is negative when we rotate between 270 and 360 so we're facing in these directions but we're taking backward steps and so that means and our biggest step backwards is when we're facing 315 degrees and we take eight steps back all right and so We get this. It's another rose petal graph. Once again, I want to draw your attention to the fact that your petals correspond to these tips. Right, those correspond to petals in the polar graph. That's one observation. The other thing is, as usual, the petals are evenly spaced. In this case, let's see, 45 degrees to 135 degrees, that's a spacing of 90 degrees. So those are spaced 90 degrees. These are spaced 90 degrees, right? One, 135 to to 225. These are spaced 90 degrees and these are spaced 90 degrees. And so they're evenly spaced 90 degrees which we know we can represent as 360 degrees divided by 4 where that 4 is the number of petals. And so here's where we should notice the distinction between this one and this one, which is covered up, this one, here, in fact, I probably should have written it. How many petals were there? There were three, right? There are three petals. I should have recorded that. And the petal length was five, right? They're each a length of five, which actually corresponds to the amplitude here. Okay, so that'll always be the case. And the three showed up right in the equation here it up again. Here, the number of petals is not two, it's four. Right, so even though this tells you how to get the number of petals, it's not always the case that this is the number of petals. Okay, the petals, the number of petals in this case was double that. So what is a con why is that happening? Well, on the previous one, you'll notice that this number was odd. It was a 3. When it's, whenever that's odd, this tells you, that B value tells you precisely the number of petals there are going to be. When it's even, you have to double that. We can get into the discussion as to why that happens. Um, but for now, let's just uh, observe it. And the petal length here, again, is 8, right? The, the, the farthest you walk out is 8, and, of course, that corresponds to our amplitude here. Right, the amplitude is really mapped on to the petal length over here. Okay, so that's what I wanted you to observe. Now, I'm going to show you how to use these observations to make a nice quick, uh, a nice quick rose petal graph without having to re-sketch the entire rectangular form of the equation.